ultra comforting, steamy chicken broth packed with so many really cool immune boosting ingredients, this soup is giving you one big healthy hug. It's my immune boosting chicken noodle soup. Hey Dax, do you reckon immune boosting is like code for like hangover food? Oh, this is hangover food for sure if I've ever seen it. I could have used this yesterday on Yeah, Sunday. you could have. You could have yeah. actually, couldn't you? Would have been nice. Yeah. Would have been yeah. nice. This is definitely a Sunday soup yeah. for you, huh? Would have been good. <laughs> All right, so what do I mean by immune boosting? Well, I kind of wanted to cook something for you guys that, um, I don't know, helped out a little bit with that warm and fuzzy kind of healthy feeling. Um, I am all about flavor though, so you guys know that if it's healthy and I'm doing it, it still needs to taste really good. The thing that I love about this soup is there are quite a few really cool ingredients here that help you out a bit. First of all, ginger. This is great for nausea if you're feeling a little under the weather. Also great antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. And while we're on the anti-inflammatory, I'm using garlic and fresh turmeric. Both those two ingredients really powerful, naturally anti-inflammatory. So that's some of the things. There's more things coming later, I'll explain. But let's get going first of all on my chicken. Now I'm using chicken thighs and I know that you guys know that I'm a legs and thighs girl and coincidentally, did you know, chicken thighs have more iron than chicken breast. So there you go, there is actually method to the madness. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of oil here into my pot. I'm using olive oil here, but you could use a macadamia or a grapeseed oil as well. And I'm gonna add some salt here to my chicken thighs. And the whole point with starting out with the chicken is that I really wanna get some lovely brown chicken going on, because that browning that happens in the pan, that's a lot of flavor. Okay. A bit more salt on that second side. Now just let those guys do their thing. So just a few minutes here and you can see we're starting to get a lot of that caramelization, the browning happening in the bottom of the pan there. And I'm gonna flip the chicken over. And again, just let that color again. So I think with really simple soups like this one, uh, just the little details are what's really important. All of that lovely color is gonna really serve our soup well in terms of chickeny flavor. Okay, that chicken's looking good. Add that onto a plate. Now don't wash the pan out. We just went to all that trouble to get all that lovely color and flavor. Now I'm gonna add in some onion, straight in there. And there's just a natural little bit of chicken fat that we have that's come out into there as well. So we don't have to add any extra oil. Make sure you're using your spoon to scrape up any of those brown bits. Okay, so my onion is lovely and soft and golden here. I have let them cook down for a couple of minutes. Now I wanna go in with some ginger. And some garlic. And this guy here is your fresh turmeric. So looks a little bit like ginger, but the skin's a bit darker. And then if I cut it open, can see they've got a really lovely orange color there and you just want to peel off the skin. Now don't go touching anything like your white dress, which I happen to be wearing, um, or anything like that. Just like the powdered turmeric, this is going to stain very easily. Now fresh turmeric freezes really well, so if you do happen to get a hold of it, just freeze a bunch of it like in little sections, unpeeled, and then when you want to use it, just defrost it, peel it, and off you go. So I'm also gonna pop in some chili here. Now interestingly, which is great for me because I eat a lot of chili, but chili also has, um, well it contains capsaicin, which is also an anti-inflammatory. So these are all things that are very good for us. Well, they at least make me feel like I'm doing something virtuous, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, I need a few more spices here. I'm gonna go in with some ground cumin, ground coriander, and garam masala. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with some chicken stock. Now you can just use store-bought here, don't be a hero every night of the week, particularly not if you're hungover. Now I do just wanna sort of deglaze the pan a little bit, and by that I mean I wanna lift off all of that lovely browning business that's happened on the bottom there. So I add a little bit of stock first and then just scrape that up. Already I'm getting like lovely warming spices healthy kind of vibes going on here. Actually, I'm just, more than healthy vibes, I'm just getting like straight up flavor vibes. It smells good is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I'm gonna put my chicken back in.
pour in any juices from that resting chicken. Now, more stock. And then I just like to top this up with some water. Okay, lid on, and then basically I wanna cook the chicken thigh, obviously, until it's cooked through, but I also want all of those aromatics to kind of make friends in there and um, really kind of develop some lovely flavor and infuse that chicken stock. So we're gonna let it go for about 15 minutes, we'll do, I think, and come back. Now, my chicken is almost done, probably about five more minutes, so I'm just gonna get a few more things prepped up here. I wanna get my noodles cooking. These are some dried egg noodles. Now we're doing a couple of different types of greens here. First of all, I'm going in with some broccolini. I'm gonna put these in sort of at the last minute, so I wanna slice them into nice little bite-sized pieces. Now with my noodles, I'm gonna drain them off and then I'm actually going to toss them with a little bit of sesame oil, which will help them from sort of sticking and clumping together, but also add a nice little bit of sesame flavor. Okay, put my noodles out into some bowls. Now let's have a look at this chicken. Mm, this smells really good. Okay. I just want to slice the chicken, almost so it kind of looks a bit shredded, you know what I mean, like shredded chicken. Now my broccolini can go in. And my kale, chicken. And then you just need to give this another like five minutes or so for the broccolini to become a little tender, the kale to melt down, and that chicken to take on even more of that soupy flavor. Now one final thing here, I just wanna check the seasoning because chicken stock can vary so much in terms of how salty it is. So you'll need to go by your own taste here. Oh, that's good. Oh. You know, the spices are also warm and lovely um, and that beautiful chickeny soup flavor that's just so comforting. I'm, I'm gonna go in here with a little bit more salt and just a little pinch of white pepper. Now, of course, if salt and sodium is a concern for you, you can just leave the salt out of all the stages that I've put it in. Um, so that's definitely an option. Now, this is looking good. So, scoop out a nice steamy kind of ladle. This is the kind of soup that would freeze really well too. So if you're someone who likes to do meal planning, this would be the perfect thing to do. I would cook the noodles separately though. So cook the soup, put it in the freezer, and then you just have to reheat and cook your noodles. A couple of final things here to make it really special. Some bean shoots and some cashews. Now just adding this little sprinkle of nuts at the end, we're kind of increasing the vitamin E content, which nuts have, and also like they taste good. So, you know, good thing. Okay, so let's get in here and have a look, shall we? Toss all of that together. Yum. Okay, let me try this out. Mmm. Yum. That is definitely my kind of noodle soup. Chickeny, really lovely spices that don't kind of like, they're not overpowering. They're just kind of like a really lovely, subtle, you know, warming kind of spice situation. Mm. You could totally spice that up and add more chili if you wanted to, but that's just a really lovely, comforting, immune boosting soup. Yum. It couldn't be any easier to make this rich, spicy, Moorish broth. I have all the cheats for this one, my friends. This is my slow cooker chicken laksa noodle soup. All right guys, insanely rich, spicy broth coming up, but like with almost no effort. Let's get straight on to doing that. First of all, uh, I'm gonna just put some oil into my pan here. And even though we're doing a slow cooker uh, recipe here, I still like to always kind of, um, you know, do whatever I can to develop some flavors before I get everything into the slow cooker pot because you don't get the same searing and the same heat that you would from a pan. So anything that needs, uh, you know, that kind of attention always gets it even though I'm using 
in a slow cooker. So in this case, it's curry paste that needs the attention here. Um, curry paste really always benefits from a little bit of love uh, in some hot oil. All the aromatics and flavors then get released. And you don't want that pan too hot because red curry paste uh, and oil means splatter. <laughs> So yes, I am using a Thai red curry paste for this one. Uh, you can use Luxa paste if you are somewhere where that's readily available. I often use Thai red curry paste for this because um, I often have Thai red curry paste in my pantry because I'm half Thai. <laughs> so I just wanna give this a little bit of time here, just a little bit of a sizzle. Now to give my Thai red curry paste that kind of curry Luxa kind of flavor, uh, I'm gonna add some curry powder here. Now to that, I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken stock. And again, because I'm making a little cheats version today, that is a store-bought chicken stock. No need to be a hero every night of the week. And you just wanna let that bubble away for a couple of minutes here. So now we have this gorgeous spice paste and I'm gonna pop that into my slow cooker bowl. So if you didn't want to use a slow cooker here, you could pop this into um, a regular, you know, large pot uh, and you could have it simmering on the stovetop for, you know, about 90 minutes or so would be good. I guess the, um, the benefit of using the slow cooker is that you don't have to come back and check it. Um, you know, you can just let it sit around all day while you're at work. So, you know, but choose your own adventure there, guys. I'm going to add in the rest of my chicken stock here. Let's give that a mix. And now here's my chicken. And now this is gonna go into my slow cooker, six hours on low. Okay, so it's been a very busy day here <laughs> in my studio. We're back here in the afternoon and Check this out. Okay, our chicken is looking quite delightful. I did kind of turn it around a couple of times just so I got a really lovely even color all over the chicken, but you don't need to do that. It's, it's more, uh, you know, a color thing. So um, this is looking really good. I'm gonna take my chicken out and just pop our little friend here into a bowl. Now just shred that chicken. It'll be really nice and soft. Now all of this soup that's going on in here, this stuff is like liquid gold, it's smelling amazing. It does need a few little extra bits and pieces here. So I'm just gonna pour this out into a pot. Now I also wanna add some extra oomph here. So I'm gonna go in with some fish sauce and just a little dash of sugar. So now we need some coconut cream. Just mix that through and already that beautiful color, you know, that creaminess and then the, the beautiful red spiced oil on top is looking so good. Um, what I do want to do though is heat this up a little just to, to get that coconut milk and all those flavors making friends in there. So just a couple of minutes. So while our broth is doing its thing, let's get all of our other little bits and pieces going. So I want some noodles here. I've got some really lovely Chinese fresh noodles here but any kind of noodle adventure you want is totally cool. Get some boiling water. Okay, noodles look good. Scrub those out. And so one other little thing I'm doing here, it's, it's totally an optional, but I've always got frozen dumplings in my freezer. So I thought, why not just add them in? Because, you know, dumplings make everything better. Now we wanna add in some of our shredded chicken. Now just a few other little extras here. I've got some coriander, some chili, and an egg. So let's get some of that amazing broth. Look at that color. That is just like joy in a pot. <laughs> now I want some bean shoots here, my egg. Building a Luxa bowl is all about like the extra bits, I reckon. <laughs> some coriander and chili. So there you go, friends. That's my very cheat kind of version of Luxa noodle soup. Uh, let's get in here and try it though, because I can't wait to taste that broth. Ah, oh, wow, that is like a huge explosion of flavor. <laughs> it's really spicy, which is just the way I like it. Oh. 
That is so good. It's just like the complexity of the flavor is incredible. I mean, you're getting this kind of like lovely curry kind of flavor, but then you've got the creamy coconut. Mm. It is so good and ridiculously easy. Ugh. Mm. So good. Love it. Love, love, love. Mm. I just need to go away now, quietly. Leave me with my bowl. <laughs>
dried rice stick noodles, they really benefit from some soaking before you go and cook them in the hot water. And what that does is it leaves the noodles with a chewier texture because I guess some of that starch must come out in the water as it soaks. And seeing as we're gonna wait for our stock anyway, you may as well go ahead and soak your noodles. And that's just room temperature water. And you'll see a bit later on that they soften up quite a bit. Now the other thing I want here is some nice little bites of greenery. So I've got some choy sum here, but you could use pak choy, you could use bok choy, you could use broccolini, broccoli, whatever kind of green that you've got handy at home. And some herbs. And I love that you can really add like such a great kick of fresh flavor and like make things extra special just with a few little extra herbs. So I'm gonna use some coriander and some spring onion. And now all we have to do is wait for that broth to do its thing. Oh, this is smelling so amazing right now. Uh, now I have been skimming just lightly the top of that soup as it's been simmering away. And I'll just do one final little lift off here. And now chicken drumsticks, I wanna save those for my soup bowl. Now, let's strain that broth. Oh, would you look at that color? Oh, amazing. Now, let's keep that soup broth nice and hot. Now, this is an optional, but I love having Asian meatballs in my noodle soup, so I've got some pork balls here to add in. I mean, you could make your own and just kind of like um, make little pork meatballs and pop them in there as well, or just leave it with the chicken. Keeping it simple is just fine. The one thing you must do is check for seasoning. So as always, I mean, you know, starting out with different types of chicken broth, whether it's homemade or store-bought, that could all affect the amount of salt and savouriness in the soup. So that's why you always got to check. Oh, that is very close. Mm. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of fish sauce for my liking. Just a couple of spoonfuls. And I also like to serve some fish sauce at the end at the table. People can add their own. All right, let's get the rest of our noodle bowl ready. So have a look at our dried rice stick noodles. They're now sort of soft and pliable. So I want a good handful of those. I like to do this individually. I know it's like kind of street cart style, but I find you just get the right amount of bounce in the noodle, the right amount of cooking for the vegetable, you know, if you just do it individually. So noodles, a little bit of greenery. And some bean shoots. I've got some water boiling here. And the trick to keeping your noodles really nice and bouncy rather than kind of like flat and soggy is to do this like super quick. I'm talking matter of seconds. So your scoop of stuff goes in, kind of jiggle it around with your tongs and I don't know, what are we counting? Five seconds, 10 seconds, maybe a little longer. Just until those noodles are tender. Scoop that into your bowl. Now we want one of our drumsticks in here and that's the other great thing about using drumsticks, we can just get it straight out into the bowl, don't have to shred the meat or anything. Good handful of our spring onion and coriander. A few of our pork balls. And then here comes that glorious soup. Final little adjustments here. Uh, some Thai basil, these are kind of optional, but I like to kind of add these bits and pieces at the end. And of course, a little bit of chili powder for me, guys. And there you go. Noodle soup, woe to go in like less than 45 minutes and wait till you try this soup. I mean, the flavor is 
so incredible for something that we've done so quickly. Can't wait to get in there. Steaming bowl of soup, noodle soup. There is like nothing better in this world. Mm. Chewy noodles. Mm. Wow. Honestly, every time I make this soup, I just am always amazed. It's like one of the one of my go-to noodle soups at home because mm, the flavour. I mean, it's so complex. You get like this beautiful. You can taste the beautiful background of that star anise and the kind of background heat from the pepper. And then you get that salty savouriness and the chickeny. Like it tastes like it's been simmering for hours, honestly. Mm. I and mean, this is really one to get excited about. Oh. Yum. One of Thailand's most iconic street food noodle soups beautiful plump wontons, roasted pork, and a broth so flavorful you won't believe. This is my version of barbecue pork wonton noodle soup. So I live here in Bangkok and I can get this noodle soup pretty much anytime I want. There's a street cart just down the road that I can go and order it from, but you guys are probably not so lucky where you are, but I'm gonna walk you through how you can make this street food classic at home not as hard as you might think. So let's start with the broth first. I'm gonna get all of my aromatics ready for that. Now I wanna start with some garlic. Just bruise these guys. And now some ginger as well. And some star anise. These three things are gonna give a really beautiful flavor to our broth. For the base of our soup, I'm starting with some chicken stock. You could use homemade or store-bought. We are gonna doctor it up a little bit, so either is fine. And to really boost the flavor here, I'm gonna add some pork bones. So you can use pork spare ribs, pork ribs, pork soup bones, just add them in and they really do make a difference to the flavor. You could use chicken wings as well. And then in go those aromatics. And now for some seasoning, I've got some soy sauce and then a little bit of salt as well. Don't want too much soy sauce because that will color the broth. So the salt adds that without the color. And this doesn't take too long because we've started with a chicken based broth already. I'm just gonna let this simmer away while I get everything else ready. So wontons, we're gonna make our own, but if you wanted to make this even easier on yourself, you could use some frozen ones as well. Pork mince. And I like to go with a pork and prawn combo. So I've got some whole prawns here and I just need a really fine mince on these. And now I also want some finely chopped spring onion, some sesame oil, and then here are a couple of ingredients that really help with the texture of our wonton. So I want some corn flour, and that kind of binds everything together, makes it sticky, and then gives us that nice pop when you go to chew into your wonton. And then a little bit of water, that extra liquid will keep everything nice and soft. Now a dash of white pepper and some salt. And then you just need to mix this until everything gets nice and sticky and very well incorporated. So now you wanna take a wonton wrapper, grab a nice little dollop of filling there. I like my wontons to be fat and plump. Just a little bit of water to help seal the edges and you really can be rough and ready with this. No fancy pleating required. Just kind of smush the edges up over that filling and press together. Now this will make more wontons than you need for this recipe, but I've never found that to be a problem. Just pop them in the freezer and then you've got them ready for any kind of wonton dumpling emergency. So by now your stock would have been simmering for about 15, 20 minutes, depending on how quick you are with your wonton wrapping. Um, I'm just gonna skim off a little bit of that stuff that's on the top. Now I just want to check this for seasoning. Mm, that is just perfect. You know, it's so amazing how quickly those pork bones impart a lot of flavor into that soup broth. Mm, doesn't need a thing. 
Now just strain that stock. I like to save the pork bones for chewing on later. That's just me. Okay guys, we're nearly there. Just a couple more things we need to get ready. We need some vegetables. Now this is the vegetable we would use here in Bangkok. It's choy sum. I just want some nice little bite-sized pieces. You could use bok choy, pak choy, any kind of Asian green is great. So the other thing we want is some Chinese barbecue pork. You can either buy this from a Chinese restaurant or you could watch a video on how to make it on my YouTube channel. Pretty easy to have at home and great to store in the freezer. A few slices. Now the noodles. So whenever I'm ordering this at a street cart, I usually go for what we call bami noodles or Chinese egg noodles. But you could use uh, thin rice noodles if you like, or any kind of noodle is, is good. The key here, especially with these Chinese egg noodles, is this needs to happen really fast. Overcooked noodles are really not a joy. So I do this individually because it's the best way to control the cooking time of the noodle. And now a little bit of the green vegetable. And we just want a couple of shakes in that boiling water and then straight out. And now we do the wontons. I always recommend cooking your noodles and wontons in a separate pot of water to your broth because both the noodles and wontons have some floury starch on the outside which can mess with your beautifully made soup. So just into that same water that I had the noodles in. And these just need a couple of minutes. These are looking good. They go straight onto my bowl. And then some of that beautiful barbecue pork. And then some soup. A little sprinkling of spring onion just on the end here. So there you go, guys. If you can't get to Bangkok to eat this amazing noodle soup, you can make it at home. Okay, so I'm gonna dig right in here because I'm kind of hungry. Mm. Dumplings make everything better. <laughs> and some noodles. Mm. You need to practice your noodle slurp, guys. That broth with those noodles, wow. It's amazing how much flavor you can get in there. Mm. So good.